So where I'm going to begin is I'm going to start with this force equation and um, we've written it down so that it can be kind of our starting point. And the first thing I notice is that there's a common factor on both sides, which is mass. Mass is, you know, just a, a constant that I can divide through. Presumably, um, the boat is not like shedding people out the side um, as they go through. So I'm going to treat mass as constant. So I'm just going to divide through and that gives me x double dot. There's my acceleration equals. Um, what do I get here? Well, I've got this minus v plus 10v squared on the numerator. And then I've got... 100 on the denominator. Okay, so far so good. Now what do I do with this? Well, I'm trying to get towards v as a function of x and I've got acceleration over here and then I've got all of this in terms of v. It's a function of v, right? So what am I going to do here? I need to get acceleration in a different form and I've got many different forms if you recall that makes it easier for me to work with um, and I'm going to pause for a moment and see if you can post in the chat for me which form is going to be most useful in order to say if this is acceleration and I've got all of this stuff minus v plus 10v squared etc on 100. If I've got all of that over on the uh, right hand side, which form of acceleration, and you may need the reference sheet or if you want to go back through your notes, um, which one's going to be most useful to me? Okay, so I'll give you a moment to have a think. Now, by the way, I should point out, um, you know, all the forms of acceleration are equal to each other. So it's not as though, um, you know, one answer can't be used, but there will be answers that allow us to be lazier and more efficient with our methods. So I see a few answers coming in. That's excellent. Okay, now, um, Angad and Jun have suggested that we write in V dV on dx. Now, if you go back to when we were doing simple harmonic motion, we also had up our sleeves, and I'll just write it over here, d on dx of half v squared. Now these are both decent candidates, right? Um, I'm really glad that, <laughs> sort of glad, no one posted in the chat like, oh, maybe like d squared x on dt squared, right? That would be a bad candidate. Not wrong, but not helpful, because there's nothing in terms of time over here. In fact, there is no situation or no information provided to us about time. Both of these are reasonable candidates because they're both somewhat in terms of V, right? But I'm going to say that this suggestion from Angad and Jun will be more helpful because if you have a look at what I have on my right hand side, you can see that there is not just a common factor of m that I've already divided through by, but there's a common factor of v which I can divide through by. So this over here on the left hand side, this is acceleration as a function of velocity. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. And now I can divide through by v. So what does that give us? I'm going to get dv on dx on the left hand side. And then I'll leave that minus sign out the front, 1 plus 10v inside the brackets. And that's still divided by 100. Okay, now where can I go? Well, remember what the question says. We want to find v as a function of x. So I've got sort of all the pieces, right? I've got um, v's, I've got x's and v's over here, um, except I've got everything in terms of derivatives, right? dv and dx separately. So clearly I'm going to need to integrate at some point to get the x actually appearing, not just a dx. Uh, in order to do that, I think probably the easiest way to go about this is to try and separate out my variables a little bit. You can see I've got my dv over here, but all the v's that should go with it are on the other side. So I'm going to do this kind of together, get the dv's all over on the left, uh, left on your point of view, left, right? And then all of the x's on the right. So let's have a go at that. I'm going to go and divide through by uh, this, this numerator up here. So I'm going to get 1 on 1 plus 10v dv. So that's what I get from the left hand side. And the reason why I haven't written the dx is because I'm about to multiply through by dx, get all my dv's on one side, dx is on the other side. So what does that leave me with? Equal to minus 1, I didn't divide through by that negative, over 100. And then that gives me dx on the right hand side. Okay, so this is promising. This is a lot of mental progress, cognitive progress since we started. I can go one better than this though because I know I have to integrate eventually, but I think I can make this easier for myself. Have a look at what you've got over here, right? You've got this uh, 1 plus 10v on the denominator. I want you to post in the chat, what category of function am I going to end up with when I integrate this? Um, you know, all the different families of functions, you know, polynomials, we've got trigonometry, etc inverse trig, 
When I integrate the left-hand side, what kind of function am I going to end up with? Can you go ahead and post that for me? What do you reckon? Thank you, Sazmet. Yay, fantastic. How are you, Drew and Sham, getting in real quick um, and even lazier in their notation. This is going to be a log, right? I can do something better to make this, or rather something easier to make this as obvious as a log. Um, I want to have this f dash on f, and that's not f dash at the moment. Um, the f being 1 plus 10v, I want a 10 up the top. So I'm going to go ahead and mul multiply both sides by 10, uh, and that will give me this 10 on 1 plus 10v dv equals, multiply through by 10 on the right hand side, that gives me 1 over 10, or negative, 1 over 10 I should say, and I'm ready to go. I'm going to integrate, in fact I'm so lazy that I'm going to take everything that's here, um, just so you can see what I've done, and now I'm just going to, maybe I'll do it in another color just to make it really obvious what I'm doing here, I'm just going to slap my integrals onto both sides, and I already have the variables of integration on each side, in one case it's dv, in one case it's dx because I separated everything out. Okay, what am I going to get? Uh, as you guys mentioned, I've got that log there. Um, 1 plus 10v is the f on the inside, log of that. Uh, I'm going to get a constant of integration, but I'm going to get a constant of integration on the right-hand side also, so I might as well just lump them into one constant. Um, I'm going to get uh, minus x over 10 plus that constant. Um, some of you are going to say, uh, Mr. Wu, why aren't there absolute value signs here? Um, I could put absolute value signs, but it's worth noting that in the vast majority of the mechanics questions we're going to be interested in, um, really only the positive values are um, the ones that we need to worry about. I mean, there's no problem with you putting absolute value signs there, um, but as you can see, um, and because I'm sort of thinking ahead for where my question is going to go, um, it isn't going to be necessary for us to put in negative values of v. Think about what that would mean, by the way, um, in order to get some negative in here that would require the absolute value signs, you're going to have to have the boat traveling back towards the start line, right? The starting point. So that's why I sort of am thinking ahead and realizing I don't need to worry about those. Okay, now, um, I've made a lot of progress, right? I've successfully integrated, I've got x in there, um, and I wanted, if you go back to the question, um, v as a function of x, so I want to get v equals something, 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 and um, I'm getting pretty close there. I should try and sort out this constant of integration, right? So I want you to have a think, and um, maybe I, I'll just sort of um, make sure that you've got this written down here, because that's pretty important, um, if you haven't already caught up with me. I need to go back to the original question, so that you can see with me how we're going to evaluate this constant of integration. What information can we use? Go ahead, post it in the chat. Um, why you, well, what you could use, you think, in this question. Uh, I'll leave all that information there. Uh, we've used a lot of the information, but there's some we haven't used yet. Yes, thank you, Angad. Quick off the mark, or also notice the absolute value signs as well. Um, I'm going to use the condition, and I'm, I might as well highlight it. Let's use a different color, like this. Um, here we go, right here. That is thinner than I thought it would be. That's a bit better. Okay, there we go. So. The boat crosses the finish line with speed 5.5 meters per second. So crossing the finish line, as you recall from our definition of x, is x equals zero. So x equals zero is crossing the finish line, and then there's this uh, velocity here, it's in the forward direction, so that's why it's going to be positive 5.5. So what I can do is I can say, in some ways, this is like the initial conditions. Um, initial is not quite the right word because that's a time word, but I can say from the question, um, and it is important to put this uh, line of working in here, right? Uh, x equals zero implies that the velocity is 5.5. So I can just do a straight substitution into uh, this equation up here. Let's call that one. So I'm going to call that, or substitute into, substitute those values into 1. What do we get here? Well, on the left hand side I've got 1 plus 10v, v is 5.5, so I'm getting 55 out of 10v, and uh, I'm putting in x equals 0, so I just get 0 plus c. So here's my constant, it's log of 56, whatever that happens to be. So I can take that back to equation 1 um, and say therefore log of 1 plus 10v, there's the left hand side unchanged, equals negative x on 10 plus log of 56. 
Okay, so at this point, we just need to do a little bit of tidying up. What I want to do is find V as a function of X. So I'm just gonna have to rearrange this, um, use some of my knowledge of logs and exponentials and how they fit together. So you can see I've got the natural logs, so that's base E. In fact, I'm gonna do this on the next page because I'm gonna run out of space. Oh, I think I can be cheeky and stick it in there. Um, you're gonna get E to the power of everything that you had up here. That's all gonna be, I might make it a bit smaller since it's the index there. There you go. Um, I've also got index laws that I can use here. So when you've got this common base and it's got, you know, this is like e to the power of a plus b, that's the same as e to the a times e to the b. And the reason why that's useful is if I write this as e to the power of here's the a and here is the b, um, hopefully you recognize it's sort of like one of the early results that you learned in logarithms that e to the power of log something is just that something, e to the log k is k. So in this case, this whole term here is just gonna become 56, which will dramatically simplify things for me. Uh, while I'm at it, remembering that I'm trying to make v the subject, I'm gonna subtract one from both sides. Uh, and then here on my next line, I reckon we can be pretty tidy and do um, a few things at the same time. I'm gonna divide through everything on the right-hand side by 10. That leaves me with 56 e to the negative x on 10 minus one. Ta-da, there's v as a function of x. So let's just pause. This is part eight, by the way, we're done. Um, let's just pause before we go on. Have a look at this, uh, let me just highlight it here. This result that we've gotten here, v as a function of x. What kind of mo model is this, right? What has the calculus led us to? This e to the power of, let me just zoom in there, right? e to the power of negative x on 10, and then all the rest of this stuff is just kind of like scaling in position, right? This thing here, this is the core. Um, this part here is the engine that sort of tells us what's going on and what behavior we ought to be able to expect from this boat. Um, what does e to the negative x on 10 roughly look like? Um, well, we know what an exponential curve looks like ordinarily. e to the x is just gonna start flow and then off it goes. E to the negative x on 10 um, doesn't start low and then go high, it's been uh, horizontally reflected, right? So think back to all the graphing stuff we did all the way back in advance, right? Um, therefore, it's going to start high and then come down low. This is an exponential decay model. Uh, much like, say, the half-life of a radioactive material. Um, and that makes sense, because if you think back to our equations of drag, or our expressions for drag here, right, the faster you're going, the more drag you experience. Uh, and that's why you can see if V is larger, then this whole expression, mm, 1 over 100 MV, which is the form drag, that's going to be larger. More velocity, more drag, right? Uh, and it's the same thing over here, but even more so, you got a V squared term there, um, with the skin drag. So greater velocity means um, greater slowing down, a greater force acting against you, resisting you. And so it sort of makes sense that the further you go, the slower you go. And the slower you go, the less you're slowing down over time, right? Um, that's what you expect from an ex exponential decay model. So even though you don't need to know that to answer part A, I think it's really important you're always interpreting the results that you get.